Hey guys, welcome back to part two of bioavailability. This time we're going to talk about the different forms that drugs come in and how they can affect bioavailability. So let's begin. So like I said, bioavailability varies among different formulations and different dosage forms of a drug. When I say dosage forms, we're talking about things like tablets, capsules, solutions, elixirs, IV suppositories. There's a great many forms that drugs can come in, and depending on that form, the bioavailability can change. Now, it would be amazing if you could say switching between a tablet and IV solution was as easy as a one-to-one -one ratio, like saying 100 milligrams of this oral tablet equals 100 milligrams of IV. However, that's not the case. Now with IV formulations, however, they are usually considered to have a bioavailability of 1 or 100%. So just kind of keep that in mind. We'll get back to that later. But when you are switching between dosage forms, we have a very simple equation. And that is bioavailability times dose equals bioavailability times dose of the two different formulations. So like on this side, you would put all the information you need for tablets. And on this side, you put all your information for IVs, and you would just cross multiply. Now, so let's kind of use that and use it as an example of what we just learned there. So to Joxin, its bioavailability is 1 when, co when it comes in the form of soft gelatin capsules and in an IV. In the elixir form, it has a bioavailability of 0.8, and in tablets, it has a bioavailability of 0.7. All right, so let's see if we can use this. If a patient receives 250 microgram tablets daily, what is the equivalent dose in soft gelatin capsules? And what about the dose in elixir, the equivalent dose in an elixir? So I'll give you a second to think about that. See what you can do. Go ahead, just write it out. Okay, that seems like enough time. All right, so we're just gonna kind of go through this. So if we have 250 micrograms of the tablets and its bioavailability is 0.7. We set that up to do an elixir. We'll have the X amount of the dose and the bioavailability of the capsules, sorry, we'll do capsules first, is 1. So you just take 250 times 0.7, divide by 1, and that gives us X equals. 175 micrograms and that's for the capsules that's the equivalent dose we can set that up again to do the elixirs so we're still taking 250 times 0.7 equals x times and this time with the elixir we have a bioavailability of 0.8 solve for x and x equals 219 see so it's not as simple as that one-to-one -one ratio, but it's really not that difficult to solve for what we need. We also have things such as chemical forms. Chemical forms should also be considered when we're calculating for bioavailability. We have things such as salts or esters of a drug. Sometimes you'll see things like we'll say drug X and you'll see it end in HCL, different salt forms. All we have to do is to account for that is we should just multiply bioavailability times S, S being the fraction of administered drug that is active. So we don't care if there's an inactive salt, we only want to talk about the active drug. So we're really not that different in changing our equation. Instead of having drug that reaches systemic circulation equal bioavailability times dose, this time we're just adding S among the mix, okay? So let's do an example because I love examples. So let's say we have aminofloflin, which is the salt of the active theophylline. Alright? 80% of the weight of 80 of the weight is active drug. So active drug is 80%. We have a bioavailability of 0.1. I'm sorry. We have a bioavailability of 1. If 300 milligrams of aminothoflin is given, how much of theophylline is going to reach the systemic circulation? So really, this isn't all that different than what we did before. We want to take 300 milligrams, times that by 1, and we're going to times that by 0.8. So we have our dose 
times F times our salt and that should give us 225 milligrams of theophylline. What do you know? We're right. Awesome. See, pretty simple. So just continuing on with salt forms. Sometimes the prescriptions labels will already take into account some of that active drug. Valproate sodium is an example of that. With valproate sodium, it is the sodium salt of valproic acid. It has already been manufactured and labeled with the equivalence of valproic acid. So the S in this case is 1. As you can see, it says valproic acid activity. So it's already taken into account, so we don't have to multiply it by the S form. Alright guys, that's all there is for really about different dosage forms. I hope that was useful and we'll pick you guys up next time. Thank you much. Bye.